With OnePlus's trajectory really moving forward with the OnePlus 12 series, and starting with the OnePlus 11 last year, after their bust of the year with the OnePlus 10 series, I wanted to take a look back at the original flagship killer, the OnePlus One, 10 years later. How's it holding up? I'm Miggy the Tech Guy, and let's find out. First, I wanted to talk build quality with the OnePlus One. Back in 2014, when this phone came out, it was built very brilliantly. I actually miss how devices were built back then. There was so many different materials, such as this one, which was the sandstone backing. It was a 64 gigabyte variant, which is a little bit more premium than the white variant, which was only 16 gigs stock. So yeah, I do have the more premium variant, but I miss the days when devices were built like this. The sandstone backing on these devices going into the OnePlus One and the OnePlus Two even, were built so great and felt so premium in the hand. In my opinion, if they brought that back today and did away with the glass backing and all that stuff on modern devices, I would not be upset. This was such a great feeling device and I think you could use it just fine without a case. I can't say the same for a lot of devices today. I feel like you need to put a case on your device, otherwise you're gonna break it by it sliding out of your pocket, out of your hands, off of a table, all of those things. But with this device, it can sit firmly on a table and you wouldn't have to worry at all. And it also feels weighty enough in the hand that if it dropped, you wouldn't really worry about it breaking either. So it feels much better than I thought it would hold up 10 years later in 2024 here. It actually feels a lot cooler cooler in my hand and I think it looks a lot better in my opinion nowadays rather than a lot of the devices that are out today so it's really cool to see what OnePlus was doing even back then and I know that with the new OnePluses you can get the sandstone cases but it's just not the same as it being built this way and even back then customization was rampant. With Moto X and their Moto Maker, you, you could put wood on the back, you could put leather on the back. OnePlus had a similar thing where you could purchase wooden backs and other colors and things like that. So that was really cool that we were in an era where you could really customize your device and make it yours with such different materials if you wanted to. I miss those days and it's really, really worn on me here in 2024 how stagnant everything and how the same everything has become, making me miss how this device is built. So yeah, in 2024, this thing is built brilliant. I think with that combined with I mean if you think about it for the time it was actually a really large phablet device with a 5.5 at inch display yes this display is not OLED it is LCD so the blacks aren't super black but overall the display on this device is brilliant and it has really punchy colors for an LCD in my opinion so if you're looking for anything to be a flaw for this device even in 2014 it was a flagship killer in the first place and it really did shoot for the stars and I think it hit really hard with its build quality and its display overall yeah other devices did have OLEDs at the time and it was wonderful but you had to spend a premium dollar to get that in the first place a lot of devices that were not premium did have LCD displays and even some premium devices had LCD displays back then as well it's crazy to think back then that 5.5 inches was really huge back then but if you consider most phones had crazy bezels on them already this is not that far off and of course in modern times screens have gotten a million times better with OLED technology with the 100 120 hertz versus 60 hertz and all of those things that make a modern smartphone look like a modern smartphone especially in the display department back then this was punching well above its price point it was only 350 dollars at the time and that's crazy to think that it was punching at 700 dollar devices and giving you a really great punchy experience at not a really expensive price point so that's really cool shout out to oneplus for having an amazing build quality in 2014 and the actual overall design of this phone was really refreshing and really great to see even here in 2024. But I was lucky to pick this one up because this is a OnePlus One that's in an extremely great condition for how rare it is and how old it is. So I was lucky to pick this one up. I got this one and a OnePlus Two on a super cheap deal on eBay. So I'm super happy about that. I was able to get a really nice looking OnePlus One if you think about it. The backing is almost immaculate with a few minor blemishes on it but overall it looks really great and i think it holds up very well 10 years later so build quality is a go even here in 2024 in my opinion next we're going to talk about 
software and experience. This is where OnePlus was off to an interesting start back when they first started because this thing shipped with Cyanogemon. And MKBHD was talking about how that's supposed to make or break the phone. They started off a little rocky with some bugs here and there. And then he did make a revisited video where they did fix those and they were really on top of it. So OnePlus overall was doing a really great job with Cyanogemon. And then Cyanogemon kind of fell off with OnePlus. And just in general, they weren't really doing anything. So OnePlus made their own, which was Oxygen OS. And that was the birth of Oxygen OS. And it was really cool to see them do that and take the trajectory around 2015-ish, going into their own software when the OnePlus 2 was coming around. It's really interesting to take a look back at this device. Mine shipped with Cyanogemon on Marshmallow. So I should note that, that this the experience nowadays with Marshmallow not a lot of the apps work. It was very buggy and laggy. It definitely didn't stand the test of time in the software experience department on its stock OS. And that was very much to be expected, especially 10 years later and Marshmallow basically being its highest you could go. I understand that a majority of the apps aren't going to work and the experience was gonna be rather laggy. It was. General scrolling was fine and opening up the system apps, but if you went beyond that point, there was a lot of contention and issues. I had to download older versions of apps to make them work and that was a problem. Some apps did download the latest version, but it was just kind of an all over the board experience. So what I decided to do was check out the custom ROMing community for the OnePlus One. And guys, I'm happy to report that people are still working on this device today. I was able to find a build for Android 12. Unfortunately, I did have to roll back to Android 11 because the Android 12 ROM did have an issue with the camera. So I will not be able to show off the Android 12 on here just because the camera wasn't working and I, I didn't want it to be buggy out the gate for me to use as a solid experience. I needed to get photos and whatnot, and it just wasn't working for me on that. So I did roll back to an older version of Lineage OS with Android 11, which helped out a lot, to be honest with you. It helped out a lot more than I thought it was going to and really refreshed this device. Scrolling, opening up apps, it was all a breeze. And it made me think that this is actually pretty good to use as like a backup phone if you let's say you broke your phone and you had this laying around in a drawer and you pulled it out and put a custom ROM on it you could use it while you wait for your new phone to come in and I think that's really crazy 10 years later that you could even with the specs that this came out with which was the Snapdragon 801 and only three gigabytes of RAM you're expecting it to not hold up at all but with the custom OS it ran pretty smoothly. There were occasional lags and I could definitely tell that the three gigs of RAM was holding it up in a lot of scenarios with apps in the background when you started to open things and modern times and how many apps were running and trying to go back and forth in and just keeping up with the day to day in 2024 is definitely way rougher than it was in 2014. It's a lot more fast paced. There's a lot more going on. That should be noted that obviously you can bog this thing very quickly. But for the most part, it had a very solid experience. I was just pleasantly surprised at the overall experience day to day when I put Android 11 on here. Yes, it's not the most modern version of Android. I'm sure if I dug more, I could find better ROMs and whatnot, but I just wanted to give it a solid experience. And Android 11 is perfectly fine here in 2024. You can download all the modern apps and you could run them perfectly fine. Just be careful because security purposes of course it's not on the latest security patch and that's understandable so if there's something to be had there obviously that's it but its actual experience from downloading apps and running them is perfectly fine and that is a testament to show you android and its capabilities even 10 years later and how well it really holds up here is super impressive to me there was Occasional lags, of course there was. I did have a hiccup in the Twitter application. I'm not calling it X. I will never call it X, Elon. It's always Twitter to me. Sorry, not sorry. But in the Twitter application, scrolling, I did have an issue where it did bog down and was unresponsive for a little bit. And a couple other instances where it was unresponsive and bogged down due to the three gigs of RAM. But overall, like I said, it was a really cool experience and it was really great to just use this phone and for it to feel as fast as it did was actually very impressive to me. I was not expecting to go into this liking the phone in 2024 and its experience, but I did. I was actually very happy to carry it around as a secondary device in my pocket with my daily driver. So it was really cool to just play around with it, do some normal social media stuff. I even sent out a tweet via this device, which is really cool. So yeah, overall, pleasantly stunned 
at the experience I got from the software and overall using the device here in 2024. It's a super go with that. And like I said, you could use this device as a secondary phone if you really, really had to. And I don't think you'd be that upset about it. Next, we're gonna talk about the camera on the OnePlus One. Yeah, the camera on here, spoiler alert, not great. It's one of the reasons why it was so inexpensive back then was this camera and oneplus has always been known for not having the greatest cameras in the first place and they've kind of been that way up until recently so it's no surprise here that the camera doesn't hold up well because any phone from that era pretty much doesn't hold up that great if we're really thinking about it the oneplus one of course the camera is not great the dynamic range leaves a lot to be desired low light is just pretty much impossible you can get barely any photos you can of course get stuff and in decent lighting you can get some pretty solid photos but overall you can tell its age here and that's where I think we've come such a long way is in the camera department since 2014 and that's something you'll notice heavily in 2024 and of course you wouldn't want to use this as a daily driver because of that even so yeah if you need to quickly shoot something it can do it it can take some pretty okay shots it takes okay selfies nothing to write home about like I said but the device itself has a camera at least it's something it's not completely potato quality which is impressive but of course that's going to be one of the major things that does not hold up today so for camera purposes i'm going to show you guys some photos just to give you guys a comparison of the different styles you can get and the lack of range it really has so i'm going to shut up and show you guys those photos Yeah, like I said, photos, nothing to write home about. Something you guys definitely seen when you seen the photos. It's not the greatest now in 2024. It wasn't the greatest back then in 2014. So in cameras, not really a go. Next, we'll talk about the speaker, which is really not great either. That's another reason. And it's something else they definitely cut corners on to keep the price down to the $350 range that they did. Very evident in the speakers of this device. It's very tinny. It's one bottom firing speaker. It's easily blocked. And all of that, those things that kind of plagued it back in 2014 are plaguing it here in 2024 and even worse it's no comparison to anything even budget phones have better speakers in my opinion nowadays you can definitely see its age in its speaker it's very very tinny like i said and it doesn't sound that great i'm gonna play a little bit of it here for you guys now but overall the sound quality is pretty abysmal it's not really that good 
and it's definitely a reason why you don't want to use it here in 2024 is that pretty crappy speaker of course i should note that it does have a headphone jack so you can put a pair of headphones in and kind of fix and mediate that issue which a lot of phones nowadays don't have the headphone jack so to me that's kind of impressive and that's something as a lot of tech enthusiasts i know miss the headphone jack so it was nice and refreshing to see that this does have a headphone jack for you to listen to your music or videos or any media content that you desire so yes the speaker's pretty crappy but it does gain a point by having its headphone jack now we'll talk about battery life yeah the battery life on this spoiler alert is not good here in 2024 this is a used device so the screen on time is basically non-existent you can get a couple hours of screen on time before this thing wants to kick the bucket so battery wise of course it doesn't really hold up that well it is micro usb on the bottom for charging it does take a while for it to charge it's not really that amazing in terms of endurance quality it was okay back then it held up respectably it got you a day of use usually and of course it's not holding up like that today just because it's been 10 years and i have not replaced the battery in this device although this is a really nice solid clean one that i got on ebay it's definitely showing its age huge in the battery life and doesn't hold up like that so it's something you would need to charge throughout the day if you are going to use it as a secondary device while you're waiting for a phone you're going to have to charge this probably multiple times so take that into consideration of course battery life is not a go here in 2024 it is great to look back on and see that it probably did hold up pretty well and if you watch any of the old reviews it did it's not amazing by any means and it did have a large display back then so it was using a lot of its juice but i mean that's to be expected here of course it is in 2024 battery life's definitely not a go so yeah that's what i gotta say about battery life and lastly let's talk about gaming on this device of course that's where the snapdragon 801 and it's adreno gpu and the three gigs of ram really really show some aging in terms of endurance and speed yes it's gonna play your basic games and even in some of those it kind of chugs along like temple run and playing angry birds and stuff like that it can play cut the rope it can play very basic games but you're not gonna want to play call of duty mobile or fortnite on this i don't even think you could load them properly yeah you have enough storage with 64 gigabytes you could probably download a pretty large game and they did future proof in the storage department but in terms of actual raw specs the oneplus one isn't going to do you any favors you can do basic gaming like i said this is something that you can throw candy crush on and probably be pretty all right with or like i said subway surfer or temple run any of those basic games this can run it it'll be fine you're not going to be super upset about that but don't get your hopes up about playing super large games it's just not going to happen so for gaming it's kind of wishy-washy if you're just a basic gamer and play very basic games that's fine but if you wanted larger games this is definitely not one you're going to want to pull out and use anytime soon i did want to touch on oneplus and their flagship killer mantra and how they really started here as a flagship killer they did have an invite system when you wanted to purchase this device here the oneplus one started with invites and People were scouring the planet trying to find an invite for this. MKBHD gave some away. I know that the, you know there was a lot of issues with supply and demand of this device, and I don't think they were anticipating it being as much of a hit as it really was, which is humbling for them, I'm sure. But at the same time, like for us as tech people, I couldn't get one of these back in the day 10 years ago. I was just pretty much saying, oh, chalk it up to me not being able to get this device. It's really cool, but I'm not going to be able to use it. What's really cool is I actually had a friend, John, shout out John, when I worked at hh greg back then he actually had a oneplus one and i got to play around with it when he came to work one day but that was what was really cool to me my first oneplus device was actually the oneplus two i have another video coming on that but that was one of my favorite devices of all time and i'm really happy that i got into oneplus and it's really what gave me the love for it in the first place so to take a look back at this flagship killer that was really hard to get your hands on it's really nice to just feel the nostalgia of the flagship killer and what it really stood for and seeing that even 10 years later it holds up and holds a place in my heart it makes me really smile that oneplus is going back to the flagship killer route with their 12r and doing a really good job at being a flagship with the oneplus 12 in my opinion so they've really turned it around the oneplus 11 was a great device and has pretty much been my daily driver for the most part other than the galaxy s23 ultra so oneplus still holds a really dear place in my heart i really didn't like the oneplus 10 pro and i had one and i sold it just because it had some bugs and issues and the opification really bothered me and it's grown on me more just because they've been so solid and fluid as of late but 
for the most part, the OnePlus 10 series was a real flop to me and it really just made me resentful for, towards them. So for them to go back to the roots and really showcase that they're doing a good job here in trying to get back to the OnePlus One and what OnePlus really stood for, it's really nice to see them turning a new leaf and doing that. I know they peaked at the OnePlus 7 and 7T Pro in my opinion, so that is where they peaked. The OnePlus 8 Pro was great and the OnePlus 8T was fine too, but that was when they were really taking their turn and when Carl Pei left. Shout out to Carl Pei and he's really kind of carried the torch to the Nothing brand and the Nothing Phone 2A is kind of what the OnePlus One was because that phone is $350. Yes, it has the MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Pro, but if you think about it, it still holds up towards a Galaxy S24 Ultra, and that's pretty impressive to me that a phone that's $350 could even be considerable compared to a $1,300 phone. When you're spending a thousand more dollars, you expect a thousand more dollars a phone, but the law of diminishing returns really shows that, and Carl Pei really knows how to play to the advantages of software and the experience and optimization and it shows through on the nothing phone 2a in flying colors in my opinion it's really cool to see what he's done shout out to carl pay and everything he did for oneplus he was really pushing the boundaries in trying to innovate with oneplus and their devices and you could really see it when he was a part of the brand and where he left you can see the open hole the gaping hole that oppo tried to fill and him bringing out the nothing phone is basically that callback to the real flagship killer here the oneplus one and that's awesome to see because even in the landscape of 350 dollars phones this was 350 dollars back then competed with 700 dollars flagships he made a phone that's 350 dollars today that competes with the flagships that are a thousand more dollars that is impressive to me shout out to carl pay for real overall the oneplus branding oneplus in general they were misstepping for a moment but they got the bust of the year and they really turned things around and i'm really impressed with where they're going and how they're really coming full circle and showing off that they can make a great device even with the oneplus open they have one of the best foldable devices out there so they've really started to turn things around and make themselves look like the brand they used to be and that is what I'm loving. I love that they push themselves and they're not just this other brand that you should buy instead of Apple or Samsung. They are their own solidified brand. They prove that they can make a flagship device and they can make a flagship killer still. So shout out to OnePlus that overall they did a really amazing job and it's awesome to see those roots shining through like the OnePlus One here. So that's it for the video, you guys. If you really like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you dislike this video, hit the dislike button. If you really liked it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get more content from me. And as always, I am Miggy the Tech Guy, and I am out. Peace.